tuning into Amy's Crypt tonight. We are checking out one of the most haunted cemeteries in the whole of Australia. Seriously, guys, this place has so much notoriety in the paranormal. I'm very excited to investigate with you all tonight. Kapunda is a small town in South Australia notorious for its hauntings. Kapunda's St. John's Cemetery is claimed to be especially haunted. People have been claiming to see, hear, and interact with ghosts within the cemetery for many years. These spirits are thought to stem from burials within the cemetery, as well as from a church turned school and girls reformatory that once sat atop the hill overlooking the graves. Ghost stories circulated about the cemetery have become a point of debate and controversy as there is little historical proof to back them. Tonight, we visit this supposedly haunted cemetery in Kapunda to look for answers and investigate if ghosts really do roam this space. Guys, I'm seriously so excited for tonight. This is one of my favorite haunts. It is in my home state, South Australia, and it is super, super notorious. There's so much history about this place, so much controversy, and so much paranormal activity that is said to happen here. We are in the St. John's Cemetery in Kapunda. Kapunda is a super notorious little town. It is a former mining town, but it's known as being one of the most haunted places in Australia and this cemetery is largely reason for that. So there's a lot of folklore, a lot of stories that center around here. Now, it's not just the cemetery. There used to be St. John's Church, which is just up the hill kind of behind me. And that had a church as well as like a little living quarters for the people uh, from the church to live within. And that was built in the 1850s. Now, it did later become a school and then a girls reformatory and that was for girls who had committed criminal offence could be kept there and it functioned through until 1909. So it's pretty crazy and it kind of became really notorious in the 90s because there was a controversial documentary that came out about that place and then there was a lot of vandalism and then there was a lot of people hanging out there. So the reformatory has actually been demolished, it no longer stands but there are still a lot of sinister legends about that place and especially the cemetery. So I wanna take you to a grave of interest and start going over some of the ghost stories that center here. Guys, this brings back a lot of memories for me. One of my first investigations was here. I, I didn't even film it. This was before I had a channel or a camera even. I just came down here because, you know, you hear so many of the stories. I don't live too far away and it is a beautiful old cemetery. So I'm so excited to bring you guys here. Now we're walking into one of the older sections here. A lot of these graves are from the, the 1800s and there's one hidden right at the back that has some pretty spooky stuff associated with it. All right guys, so in this lonely corner of the cemetery, we have the grave of Ruby Bland. And Ruby was actually one of the young girls that were kept up at the reformatory. Now it is said that Ruby was actually raped by one of the resident priests at the reformatory and then to kind of hide that sin she was forced into having an abortion which unfortunately killed her and her baby and then to kind of cover everything up she was buried here in the cemetery now that is the rumor but there's actually no historical backing to say that that ever happened ruby is actually said to have died in a, a nearby local hospital of far less sinister reasons but there are a lot of people that have claimed to sight a young woman walking through the cemetery at night and people say that this woman is in search of her baby. Now I can tell you there are a lot of infants buried up along the fence line in one area of the cemetery. I don't know if her baby is actually buried here. I also don't know that that woman is actually Ruby Bland. A lot of people say it is and believe it is probably because of that sinister story that I just recited to you but I mean, it's difficult to really say the truth behind this. It is a very sad story, very controversial one though. And that kind of leads me into our next ghost story, which is also very controversial. A lot of people have claimed to cite a deranged spirit of a priest here. 
and people say that it is that priest who impregnated Ruby and murdered her in a way and they say it's very evil very dark kind of entity now again there is no historical proof that that actually ever happened so it's kind of like you can't really believe in that story but there is a lot of people who have visited the cemetery here in Kapunda and they have claimed to sight a really tall dark shadow figure here and a lot of people say yeah it's definitely like it could possibly be the spirit of a priest and there were priests who actually passed away here at the the church the on the property but i mean is it is it that black shadow figure is that black shadow figure even evil i mean if it's a the spirit of one of these priests it's likely that it could definitely be peaceful now this leads into more juicy stories that again no historical backing for but people do say legend has it that the girls were treated very poorly at the reformatory a lot of them died at the reformatory as a result and then were brought down to the cemetery buried here and are said to now haunt the grounds now there's actually no proof that the girls were mistreated up there and i've been told that there's no recorded deaths of any of them at the reformatory i believe there are some who are buried here within the cemetery but I mean these stories have just been sensationalized and twisted over time so i do want you to take all these stories with a grain of salt but all of them aside a lot of people coming here have seen some pretty weird stuff they've heard disembodied voices and disembodied footsteps and for me probably the most sinister report here is to hear babies crying in the night and I'll show you guys where this is, but along the fence line, there's a lot of unknown infants buried. So knowing that people hear babies cry out here is really chilling and a little bit sad. So tonight we're gonna to be focusing our investigation away from all of the stories that I just told you. I did wanna tell you and cover those stories just because it has become a part of the folklore and legends and history of this place. But because there's no historical backing, I'd rather just conduct an investigation, see what we pull out, and maybe we can finally tell whether this cemetery is haunted or not. back towards our car we're just doing some like b-roll in the back corner of the cemetery and we're hearing loud like really loud bangs um they're not distant either they sound close to us it sounds like something's hitting our car like it sounds like something bang on metal <laughs> i've heard it a couple of times as well so i don't know i don't know what that could be well, our car's there and it's fine and I should also mention we are like in the middle of nowhere <laughs> this place is like kind of country I guess so there's really not a lot around here why we're here though I thought I will show you guys the saddest kind of area of the cemetery so there's actually a little mural down here and this is uh, a mural to the unknown babies who are all buried along here and it's just, I mean, it's sweet that people have bought these toys and placed here for them. And this is also the area where people say that they hear the babies crying. And I was actually told that by someone who is local, that they've been here themselves at night and they've heard the babies crying. And I don't even know if that's something, I, I always want to get evidence, but I don't even know if that's something I would, I would want to hear. It's very sad. All right, I might have recorded that. That's the noise. That's the noise again. Okay guys, I don't know what that noise was, but we've heard it enough times that it's pretty consistent. So I think that we probably will keep hearing it through the night. And because it's consistent, it probably has an explanation. Maybe it's not paranormal, but I just cannot think of of what it would be uh kind of at that point now where we're just waiting to lose the last bit of light and then we can start reaching out to the spirits of st john's cemetery
Now that we have lost all of the sunlight, this place has just changed. Like the atmosphere is totally different. There's some really weird vibes because it's just gotten so much more still. Earlier when we came, it was really, really windy and there's still some wind now, but I don't know. It just has a whole different feel to it. We're gonna go just walk around for a little bit and check things out in the night because it, as I said, everything just feels so different. And then of course we're going to reach out and just start investigating and see if we can pick up on anything. I'm not going to be reaching out to any specific spirits or, uh, you know, uh, trying to do anything to communicate with the spirits from the stories I relayed earlier just because there's so many fallacies about this place. But we'll just see if we're able to pick up on anything. I think it's going to be an interesting night. Oh, it's freezing. <laughs> Let's get moving. So I say we go down through the old kind of section where we went today and head towards Ruby's kind of grave. I know that I said I wasn't going to focus on those ghost stories, but I think that area is kind of interesting just because it's so much less densely packed with, with the graves. So I think we're going to head up back down to that corner and yeah i i actually have weird feeling about this place like i i don't places don't normally get to me very much but this one feels a bit odd tonight i don't i don't know what it is i've also got like a splitting headache so this bright light is kind of getting to me a bit but what is weird is jared also has the exact same headache so i don't I'm not gonna say it's paranormal. I can't prove that, I don't know. But I'm just telling you guys what I'm feeling and what I'm experiencing. I would love to see like a shadow dart between the tombstones. There's so many. Like that would just be so cool. I just swear I heard a voice. As I said, guys, we're in the middle of nowhere. There's there's no other people out here so at least that's a good thing we don't really have to worry about scary people but i wish we were rolling but I, I swear i heard something maybe there's like animals out here or what did you hear it sounded like someone crying out kind of man woman or child i'd say woman that, that's why like, I feel like it could have been like an animal yelping or something like that, like... I don't know, it's kind of weird. Alright guys, we've got night vision. One, yes, I've got that nasty headache, so the light is killing me. But also, a lot of people believe that spirits are quite sensitive to these bright lights. And, I mean, it could be off-putting, it could be scary to them. I don't know, so... I'm just going to hit record now on my ghost tube session. This is an app that Jared and I developed and I'm just going to start reaching out. Hi, I'm calling out to anybody who is in the St. John Cemetery here in Kapunda. My name's Amy and I'm visiting with my husband Jared. And we've come here to talk to anybody that may still be around and who also wants to talk to us, to communicate. If you would like to talk, please step towards the lights coming from my hands. It's not something that will hurt you. It's something that could help us talk to you and see that you're here. Now, don't be scared. If you come really close, you'll actually hear a noise like this. And that just tells me that you're here, right in front of my hand. If 
you are here, I would love to know your name. Again, if you missed it, my name is Amy, but I would love to know what yours is. creepy here in the dark and I can just hear movement in the trees I don't think that's anything not normal though <laughs> okay I'm gonna just walk around this bit for the bit you know what let's head um, towards where I kind of heard that voice here you don't have to be frightened of us did you just hear something no oh. is there any men here Are there any women? Are there any children? Are you able to move something around me? Throw something at me? Throw something? <laughs> Just like a pebble. <laughs> Nothing major. <laughs> Gum nut. Oh, that thing is yes Far out. this is on the lowest setting jared Far out. <laughs> i thought it was weird that you didn't um get anything on ghost of it all not, not a single word that's weirder than actually getting a word to be honest yeah but, well it just goes to show you don't always get stuff you yeah. know um amy's giving me a break because my hand was getting sore holding the camera so we're gonna do a what's it called thermal thermal thing <laughs> <laughs> We're we doing the forget, thermal thingamajigger. I <laughs> forget the name of this thing, but I like it. Hang on a sec. Right, here I go. So Does this need to be brighter? No. Alright, so I'm going to press it now. Cool. I can see the trees and stuff, which is cool. Really? Yeah. Oh, you can too. Oh, yeah, that's cool. It's actually going to be hard to see anything because everything looks... um warm for some reason even though it's freezing cold right now it is pretty nippy you can see some tombstones on here as well can you call out to spirit uh can't you do that if there's anyone here can you please show yourselves to us walk towards this man with the colored stick in his hand weird what so i can see all those trees and that but this tombstone that's right in front of me i can't see at all it's invisible on this thermal thing you'd think that would hold some heat yeah like if i look over there i can see them but in this one i think john are you here or oh, william wait. sorry it is there oh there it is sorry it is there I just oh. lower. his favorite tool right 
We've never caught anything on it though, to be honest. I don't think. Have we? Oh, oh wait, no, the hand in the Australia um, Hotel. We yeah, had that right. really weird heat drip. I don't know what the heck was with that. Yeah. It looked like it was grabbing your hand. I do remember now. My bad. Oh my god, it looks so creepy out over this way. I'm gonna pump the brightness up on this. Wow. What do they look like on the They're thermal? All sort of Visible. Is there anybody out there? Are you hiding from us? I do have a large mound down here. Let's go see what that is. Straight ahead. <laughs> Check this out. What? So where I'm pointing this gun yeah. is where the infirmary used to be. Reformatory? Sorry, reformatory. And it's not there anymore. What the frick? Yet there's a big... There's um, a big out there. You've got the torch, you need to point that out there, because... There's nothing out there. There is nothing out there. Yeah, I've got a reading on here. See that? Yeah, what the heck is that? Is It's not cold or anything, is it? Well, that's saying it's four degrees. It's pretty cold. Seven uh, to eight degrees, seven. It's like flickering up and down. Could it be a tree or something? I can't see one. So there's a fence here and this is private property. So we're not going up there, guys. I mean, I can't show you any further than this. I don't know. I don't know about that one. Uh, well, I think that's the... So there was, so Hang what on, was up there? So down. what was actually up there on that hill? So what was up there was the church and the presbytery, which was where the people from the church like lived, like the staff. Um, and yeah, that's where what they turned it into the school and the reformatory. So cool. I mean, there's a, there's no building up there anymore, unless it's a tree. I think there was a tree up there, yeah, right? There, there was. It probably is, but it just looks cool because everything else, like all those greys, nothing was coming up, and now. They're so round, that's got to be, I think there was a big tree up there. There was definitely a palm tree. So I keep thinking, I see stuff, and then it's just like a tombstone. <laughs> so I keep looking out when I turn all the lights off in the dark, and I think that I see stuff. And then I put the lights on, and I'm like, oh my god, it's just a tombstone. It's just a cross. It's just, yeah, a little Jared. bush. It's just Jared. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, nearly broke my neck. We're all good though. I'm calling out to the spirits of Kapunda. Felt like I was talking to someone. Was that? Disturbingly, there's a lot of unknown babies buried in that area. They heard the babies crying. Gun. <gasps> oh. Is there somebody here with me? I don't know what, what that was. It was lighting up the sky though. That scared me. What was that? It's weird how it's just been like... I don't know what that could be. You don't have to be frightened of us. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed this episode. Tonight has been really interesting so far and I'm really like keen to just keep delving deeper into this paranormal investigation. So if you guys want to see that or you want to see more from me, make sure that you are subscribed. You've got your notification bell turned on. I do have a part two episode to this one to follow up coming very, very soon. If you want to do a little bit more reading on this haunted cemetery or any of the other haunted places I have visited from around the world, then head to my website, amyscrypt.com. You guys can also keep up with me and what I'm doing. I'm on Patreon, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I also have my YouTube members set up as well. I'm at Amy's Crypt. Thanks so much for watching Crypt Keepers. Until next time.